Uh, first things first, uh, as usual, oh, I can't access my dice tray, so I'm going to... By the way, I put a new dice tray in the bottom right in the chat if you prefer that one. Uh, but I'm going to roll a, a D2. Uh, and I got a 1. I feel like this is manifestly unfair. But once again, Alex... It the captain However, would have ordered me to do it anyway. That's <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, you, gonna, you, you got it. I'm going to rewind a little bit beyond just the most recent session. Yeah, so that that's, I, can, I appreciate I can that. Contextualize the greater part of our where we're at. Yeah. Um, we are. Uh, we're brought out uh, to the planet Raleigh, um, which uh, used to be, as we're told, some kind of economic powerhouse, and now it is in real rough shape like a constant war zone, all kinds of strife, poverty, that sort of thing. Um, we figured this is a good place that we could have sold some cargo. And also we um, had passengers uh, that wanted to go there, specifically a humanitarian aid organization called the, uh, what is it? Red Sun or something along those lines. Red yes, Sun, the Red yeah. Sun. And uh, things did not go great. Um, we ran into all sorts of trouble. Some of those folks that were in the Red Sun uh, did not end up uh, getting what they or finding what they were expecting. As a matter of fact, the local government of the planet seems to have <laughs> recently uh, been overthrown or replaced or usurped or something along those lines. And there is a presence of a different, more zealous religious organization there called the Orange. No, the Church of Stellar Divinity. Orange Sunburst was their symbol. Um, so it looked like it might have been bust, but we got work with a corporation called Manteri. A former traveler made contact with us and offered us a job to go uh, kill a space viking. We tried doing that. Instead, we found ourselves doing business with space vikings. <laughs> and our most recent adventure was helping a space viking captain named Jorgelsen get back his ship and crew that had previously mutinied against him but had splintered into a bunch of different factions that was our most recent session was kind of wrangling all of the different politics of those factions um until finally we were able to get the ones who would have been loyal to him back working together the mercenaries we paid off just out of our own pockets and then the ones that we couldn't bargain with uh we dealt with them by other means including our captain doing a a uh, one-on-one -on -one duel with the leader of the most zealous uh, group among them. <laughs> and as payment for helping him to get his ship back, Bjorgelsen gave us a big gun for our ship so that we uh, can finally defend ourselves against pirates and other such Promise threats. Promise of a big gun. Promise of a big gun. Um, so now that the Red Sun has nothing that they can actually do here because their imperial contract to do humanitarian work was canceled seemingly and we got what we wanted out of this place we had talked to them about letting them hitch a ride to some other star uh port somewhere uh so they can figure out what they're actually going to do with themselves while we try to get out of dodge unfortunately the first time we tried to leave this planet um we almost got arrested <laughs> because the planetary authority said that we uh, had been associating with terrorists. I think that's where we're at. We haven't yet left the planet. We, I need to figure out how exactly we're going to do that. Yeah, so here you are, and um, among the various uh, fractured city-states, uh, or nation-states on the planet of Rally, uh, you've got the Free League Wastes with their various bandit kings and, and the irradiated wasteland, uh, you have the uh, ICZ Iterate Control Zone, uh, the Imperial Colony, um, and uh, and then you have Golan, the kind of neo-capitalist uh, arms dealing uh, kind of high-rise white collar uh, capital of industry and uh, and business. Uh, these things all operate very differently from one another on this planet. And um, fortunately for you, you do find a, uh, a place to land, which uh, which you need to just do some basic checks, um, you know, after having left the uh, that, that, that wasteland you were in. 
in one of the bandit kingdoms. And uh, among the Free League Wastes, you find two uh, veterans of the, of the Marine Joint Task Force um, and uh, a ship heading out. And so Marcello and, uh, and Shipley uh, decide they, they need a break. And, uh, and they head out, you know, to, to, to blow their money, uh, presumably to go back to Star, Star Town Liberty or somewhere like that for a while and lay low. So you take them on, and uh, and here you are on the ship, um, flying in the atmosphere. We forgot to mention one of the important characters, uh, Captain Bellamy. If you would please tell us about your ship. Well, the Lady of Mercia is uh, is a uh, well. That's a picture of a far trader, but we are instead a free trader. Just yeah, uh, I, I can't uh, get the. Uh, let me see if I can. I can't get the. Here we go. Yep. That's what classic I Type A. Um, jump one. Nice fat cargo hold that we've never filled. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, uh, not much more to say about it, uh, you know. We but we do have. Uh, um, well, it's a it's a Type A free trader, so um, that means an upper and lower deck, and 82 ton, I think, or 83 ton cargo hold. Although a couple of those tons are taken up uh, by uh, housing a a. Um, a cannon, not a ship gun, but just a. We we, we picked up we picked up a <laughs> a literal cannon. We picked up a, and just a ballistic cannon for ourselves. Rammed it in the cargo so bay. We can kind of turn into a makeshift AC-130 if we have to. Um, uh, but uh, other than that, there's not there's not too much fancy to say about the ship. Um, at the moment, though, it's filled with people. We've got uh, all those Imperial Red Sun people still on board, and uh, with nothing to nothing to do with them, and they're just sucking up life support. We're in a pretty dire situation, actually. We we had to shell out big time to pay off those mercenaries, and that while that bought us, at least ostensibly, a steeply discounted software package for the gun that Bjorgolfsson promised us. Um, we have neither the gun nor the software until we get, as I say, five jumps away from where we are right now um, to Bowman itself. So, um, but it's home, and we've got a dog, and her name is Lady. And we have a dog, Lady, and her name is Lothar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and they don't like each other. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, I imagine... I imagine not. Interesting. I, I'm really sorry, uh, Coleman. I cannot get your uh, token. I uh, I made a mistake with your token. Let me see if I can fix it real fast. But I may not be able to. You're going to oh. have to just be uh, somebody else as far as a token for a little bit. But I'll, I'll get both uh, art pieces fixed for next time. So here you are. Uh, you're flying in the atmosphere, uh, having just departed the Free League wastes. Um, what is? We do uh, have fuel. And, and uh, you do have fuel. Uh, yeah, I remember you got that before you did all these operations, and you only flew in atmosphere for a matter of hours. This has taken the better part of a day. Uh, what I do is I just kind of I call it tossing the ball. So I like toss the ball around for everybody and when I do and you get it feel free to uh, to make a decision if it's minor or to voice your opinion if it's a, a big decision for the group so uh, top of the round I've got Chapman uh, what, what do you think got everybody um, on board you've just left this bandit kingdom you're in the atmosphere of rally you haven't departed yet I say it's time to get out of here leave this planet I don't think we have any further business tying us down and I don't mind if we don't go out the door we came in. If it's possible to just fly up until we escape Atmo, I'm okay with that. <laughs> if we run into Imperial authorities later, we can explain ourselves then. You know, what I'm thinking about that we didn't talk about or think about last time, because we were so happy to be done with it, but 
We got nothing in the cargo hold. And we can't... We got no... We can't go to semi-official channels because we're not welcome back at the spaceport. They'll try to arrest us. But is it worth trying to find something on this godforsaken rock? Okay. To, to sell? Um, <laughs> I'm between... just throwing that out there. If, if we don't, we're going to be real short. And, and we Would might have rather... all have to... Would you rather scavenger pirate something from the free league wasteland or get some illegitimate cargo from Golan? Golan, can, we can't go back to... Well, maybe we can. Would that be under... I don't know if, if the warrant would be out for us there. Well, it's them we have to blame for our situation, or at least it's it's that company. Uh, Niemeyer. <laughs> a new, I don't, a ne Neiman... Marcus, uh, and I don't, Terry? and Terry. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I hate, I mean, I know we were about to get going and everything, but doggone it. If we don't have money, I mean, we had enough money to make our next payment until we paid off those mercs and now we don't. So we got to make that payment before we get to where we're going to get the gun that we paid the mercs off. Yeah. To get. So Sometime between here and Bowman, we got to make that payment, and 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 we're not going to do it with empty cargo holds. So 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 I guess. I mean, I'm a little afraid of Golan because of the way. Um. The way they they kind of. You know, jerked us around a little bit, a lot. And Terry, right, so. but I mean, maybe there's other companies there that have things that need to go, or maybe we can just call that guy up again and say, "Hey, uh, you got any cargo that needs moving?" So, so <laughs> uh, all this happens in character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so Nolan, Nolan Coleman, uh, you you get a gig on this ship. Uh, I don't know why you're there. Maybe it's related to your gambling. You can tell me later. Uh, but you were in a pretty crappy place. Uh, Rally is a. Um, balkanized world uh, with an embattled imperial colony on it, but it's not even a client state. Um, and otherwise, the various nations on Rally are... There's like a, a Mad Max-esque post-apocalyptic wasteland of what was once the Rally civilization. And then there's this, uh, this industrial state that lives along the coast, or exists along the coast, called Golan. Um, and you come onto the ship to agree to, to be paid at least traveler pay rate or the payout of a job, whichever is higher. And here you are, and they're like, you know, oh, we're going to get arrested, and we can't land here, you know, and you hear all this. So, there, no, I'll just toss you the ball. What, 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 what do you all think? Well, I mean, you know, I, I think, you know, uh, as I said, he's been drifting since the war, and uh, I think he's uh, he found himself in a bad way on this planet and is kind of like, you know, happy to see, you know, fellow veterans from the war and get off of this place. So, um, you know, while he's not uh, thrilled with the idea of, you know, being a fugitive, it beats being a fugitive on the planet. So, and I suspect he might have had some, you know, right, gambling so, run-ins. So they're talking about going back into one of the places where they've had you know, some conflict, uh, now, what do you think? To get, to get good so they can make money because they're you know, not be able to question. pay their bills. Now his first question is, uh, is the warrant because you killed someone? No. Let's just cut to the chase and say yes. Okay. That's the short version. This, did he deserve it? Lofak looks certainly. really nervous. Her ears are back <laughs> and she's just like... <laughs> They said uh, it was because we were associating with these humanitarians. That's what they said when they when they tried to arrest us. I just thought it was entirely trumped up. I didn't know that they were that they had assigned terrorism to these humanitarians. Is that what happened? At this point, when, you, I actually rewatched the VOD for it when it happened. Oh, just to I, make I missed that detail. You're Sorry, flying so in, you're flying in the atmosphere and having this, you know, conversation. <laughs> yeah, I'm going in circles like that's a piloting. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> we associate with criminals and bad people like. We're, we're, we're not better than, than the war made out to be, but... Hey, right. I, I, extremist peaceful types? That's, uh... <laughs> well, they're right upstairs. You know, they're... they're, you, you, they're, hear they're, the, they're... you hear a ring. You hear, the, you hear the signal for, 
like you know like what would be the steward's call signal uh, a ding you know like to say hey someone outside of the uh, of the bridge wants to talk don't press the button <laughs> uh, at this that you just you hear a female voice captain whenever you're ready I would like to discuss what our next options are and that's oh, great the, we were just discussing that right now the voice Why don't you head on down to the bridge uh, Isabella very well um, Isabella I, uh, I a woman she talk has about scavenging in front of her <laughs> um, she's a, a woman that has like a um, a slight frame but otherwise uh, a kind of a, a, a smock I guess you would call it like a kind of a long uh, but tough lab coatish kind of thing but it's black and it has the imperial sunburst symbol on it and uh, and she says, uh, "Oh, new friends. Uh, hello, my name is Isabella. I'm from the uh, uh, the Red Sun. Uh, what are we called entirely? Uh, the Red Sun Interstellar. <laughs> You've never heard of that. Okay. Well." <laughs> Isabella, our problem is the what same problem it's always been. Um, money. I don't suppose you've got a couple hundred thousand stored upstairs anywhere. I'm afraid I don't, Captain. I would understand if you simply drop us off at the next port. We'll make our way as best we can. But I did have a proposal I wanted to offer instead. Wonderful. Um, shall we do it here, uh, un under flight, uh, or, uh, uh, should we sit for what I'm about to say? We can all sit while we're flying. Chapman's already sitting. She, uh, she, at the flight console. She, <laughs> she shuffles uncomfortably while you're all in a bank, you know, in, in atmosphere. <laughs> uh, and she says, I'll, uh, uh, well, I'll make it a smoother bank. I might straighten out a little bit. <laughs> Uh, now they weren't having to brace themselves. She says, We are all felons and criminals of the Imperium. Uh, at least according to the uh, the barony of Iterati. Uh, she looks at like the new crew members and she says, I can't say that for you, but you are uh, probably guilty by association uh, since you have been hired contractually. Um... I would like Sorry to propose, uh, ultimately, that we work together. No, I do not have a couple of hundred thousand credits, Captain, but I think that your crew could use, um, how do I put this, a liaison with various agencies. And I think that is something that Velez and I could be quite valuable. Well, I'm glad to... you brought it up, because that was going to be my next... I was going to ask you to do just that, since I, I assume you're probably better at that than, you know, mucking out ladies' cage. Right. Yes, well, um, we would try to help your crew as best we can, of course, but we're not spacefarers or travelers. Um, we'll, but anything that you need of us, we'll try to uh, pull our own weight to as, they, as, as, as the ancient saying goes. I was really hoping that you would be a great witness uh, for whatever authority we run into, because I assume you got some contacts in, in, the, uh, in the Imperium that can disprove this nonsense. I think that there are a couple of things that we face here. Uh, first of all, um, the current state of the Adorate control zone works in our favor. So I believe that it should buy you a few weeks at least of traveling through the Bowman Arm without your warrant and mine catching up to this vessel. But, That's great. But once that happens, I suspect that that was a warrant and we will be considered wanted criminals and fugitives. Before that happens, I would like to propose that we meet with a friend of mine, or 
an acquaintance, a former friend, um, an attorney. We're never going to get off this planet. <laughs> oh, no. He's, okay. he's not on this planet. Where is he at? Attorneys are expensive. Flammarion. Okay. Well, I think we were going to go go through there or something. We we did at least want to get paid a little bit of money for the small amount of survey work we've done. Perhaps, if anyone, in case you all forgot, we have a we have a survey contract with the Scout Service. I did forget. Uh, Yep. Well, it's worth several thousand credits if we can actually get the work done. We were trying to do it back in Astaltine when uh, when we got uh, waylaid by pirates and had to skedaddle. I have good news and bad news out of character. Uh, y y what you've done on Rally definitely qualifies as survey work. Um, so, Walston and Rally, you have the survey data for. Uh, I don't think that could be said of any other world. We spent a good amount of time on Squalia, um, but I guess that that was where our survey got interrupted. I can't remember which system that was. It probably was Squalia. Yeah. Um, okay, so he's on Flammarion. Okay, well, this this is great. Um, I mean, we'll take whatever we can get, I think. Right, Chapman? I agree. If that's on the way anyway. And, and, and well, it's... Work. Here's the other par problem. If you remember when we went through the bar last time, there was hardly anything available for yeah. for sale. And we got to go through the bar to get wherever we're going. Okay. So we could try doing picking something up while we're still here before we head out. I don't know how scavenging works. I've never done it before. Do you think we just fly over the wastelands and like just look around to see if anything shiny is on the ground and then we swoop in and take it? <laughs> You could do a, a salvage operation, and I would present a couple of options for that if you're interested. Uh, it would, however, in all honesty, constitute an adventure. You'd be landing the ship, disembarking, going on foot to, to find and evaluate things. and, and uh, Yeah, so we would have an adventure, okay. and we'd be staying on this rally to do that. We'd have more cargo to please the captain and make sure that we are able to pay well, our debts when the, the comes. The other option is also not great, to be honest with you. So you're in a, you're in a, a bit of a, a, a pickle here, because the other option is uh, to go to one of the bandit kingdoms, uh, land on one of their unimproved areas that are usually at a lower tech level, and then you need to find goods and use the speculative trading option and actually find goods among these warlords. And then, of course, you know, you could go to Golan and you'd see what happens. Or you could try to penetrate the ICZ airspace. We have 137,000 credits. And... Uh, we have 183,000 due 116. What's the date today? Is, is it still... Uh... Uh, it would come up, I think, in a two or three jumps. I can't remember. But yeah, it's... Okay, so, so, so it's, it's still... We're still at like 088 or 089. I can look real quick because I know this... Yeah. You, you are date, right, this matters, so... Yeah. I'll look. Um, let's see. Traveler logs. Uh, it's down at the bottom. It comes due on one mm -hmm. eleven sixteen, and uh, that will be in one, two, three jumps. Uh, no, four jumps. That'll be in four jumps. Okay. All right. It's not as much of a disaster as I'd feared, um, but it's going to become one soon. So anyway, I'll, I'll I'll withdraw my urgency on the matter and and say. I agree with whatever sentiment it is that says we need to get off this rock. So just so you all know what happens if you can't meet your debts is a, um, a bounty hunter thing begins on that system and the likelihood of it happening is more likely however close you are to that system. Um, and, uh, and I start rolling every time to see if a bounty hunter is showing up in space or on your ship or infiltrating your hold or things to try to take you out. 
right, so yeah. Captain, what we're thinking is leave now, hope and pray that Debar has something for us, but even if it doesn't, Flamarian's next. We have a lawyer to talk to there and almost certainly better chances of having actual money-making opportunities. Yeah, and we should take the time while we're at Debar, um, you know, to do the survey. If I remember correctly, it's worth up to what, ten or twelve thousand per uh, per system. It's ten thousand per system. I can't remember. Yeah. So. All right. Yeah. Let's so, let's hit the road. Let's get the let's get the uh, computer calculating. Uh, Isabella says. Then, uh, for everyone, are are we in a partnership? Then. Do we plan to work together so long as we bear the burden of this false accusation against us? Uh, agreed. Are all of your... How many? Are all ten of you still on board? <laughs> I wanted to propose that uh, as soon as we arrived in Flammarion specifically, uh, if we could borrow some money, I would like uh, my eight of my companions to... Stay at Star Town Liberty. I, I, they're only going to take up space and be endangered. Uh, but we Great. also. We're going to pay passengers to get off our boat. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's par for the course at this point. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. So you uh, you just head straight up and you get right out of the atmosphere and rally. Is that the plan? Yeah. I give Isabella fair warning to go strap in somewhere. <laughs> Oh, look at this cool yeah. map we drew. I forgot that. <laughs> you know, map of it here. Uh, yeah. so, so you're like here in the Free League Wastes, um, and this is the coastline, and uh, you aim straight up. Sadly, I'm going to get rid of this beautiful map that we drew. So, uh, Major, Major, are either of you uh, major, experienced major, navigators? Major. <laughs> Proficient, yeah. Yeah, as good as... Your average uh, traveler. All right, go ahead and rock, paper, scissors that one out, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, the crew position. That's right. You need a new uh, navigator and a new comms officer for now. We should put the Scotsman on the comms so no one can understand this. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Should be the Scotsman I mean, in the engineering you, you, section, you, you obviously. You can turn on the brogue if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that sounds like a good negotiating let, let tool. Let me pull up my Scots translator. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Coleman, are you okay with navigation? Sure. Great. Okay. Uh, we'll get to those things very soon. All right. So uh, you break atmosphere, and um, presumably... Um, you use your usual SOP and get in your vac suits and stuff. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, you get uh, you get all the passengers stapled down in their bunks. You do the same in your seats uh, as you uh, you escape gravity again. It takes you about three hours uh, getting out into space. During that time is when the calculations will be made. I hope you boys have your space legs still. I know it might have been a while, but uh... I like my feet on the ground, but I'll get used to it. It was time to leave, so yeah, it's not going to be too much of a problem. Your passengers sure worked themselves into a favorable position, though. Well, none of us have much choice after everything that's happened. So, uh... Um... I can't remember what I was going to say. But, uh, you're not, you're not wrong. Uh, the, the good sounds are the, 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 it's both 
because there's always a chance you run into something in space before you like get out to the point where you can do your jump transit. And I'm just like, come on, the, Ross, don't do this. No, the, no, the, the best is when he says, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> or when he says, I have a table for this. <laughs> um, you uh, you start um, making your way. Uh, and I, I cannot believe that this happened but I rolled this um, uh, and uh, let's see I also need this chart I told you there'd be some flipping for charts I need this here. chart <laughs> I assume Coleman on ah! his very first ever jump calculation accidentally zipped us right into an alternate dimension <laughs> safe jump Ten thousand, and then you got to get to like. I'm trying to see. Can't remember. It's been it's been a while since we've been in space. Been uh, been on a planet for a long time now. So I'm trying to find the um, uh, the minimum safe jump distance. But I think that it takes, um, I think that you have to be close to five hours out at 1G for a minimum safe jump. And unfortunately, you make it about 120,000 kilometers out from orbit. Um, Rally, as a reminder, uh, is a binary star system. Uh, and within this system, uh, this is the closest planet to the sun with no moons and no planetary belt. And you see uh, something come up on the radar just as you uh, are, you know, you're rising straight up. You crest, you know, the uh, so the planet's, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, horizon, it, uh, it starts to... Uh, shift away from you. Let's see, I need... This it starts like this, and then it starts getting smaller and smaller. Uh, and then once it gets to about right there, something kind of bad happens. You uh, you get a call. Uh, and all of a sudden, your uh, your multifunction display lights up, and uh, an alarm goes off. Who's on the comms? Uh, I'm trying to find the. Uh, I guess I don't have any more. Um, it's me, right? Yeah. Yep. The good thing is that you're not a known associate of the Lady of Mercia. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you're being hailed. Uh, at the same time, it's clear to um, uh, to uh, it's clear to well all of you. It's clear to Coleman, Nile, yeah, Bellamy, and uh, Chapman that you are also being locked on with a laser weapon. What do you do? Answer the com. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, I guess, and, uh, whatever hail they're sending, I'll answer. All right, you open the comm and you receive a, a hail. Traitor, Starship. Bring your engines to zero thrust immediately. Submit to boarding and surrender your cargo, or die. Joke's on you, we got no cargo. Well, we'll just see about that. Okay, let's cut it. You cut the transmission? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys feel like fighting? How big a ship is no. it? No, uh, oh, we let him on board, then kill him. It is a, oh. uh, right. 
Uh, it is a cruiser. Oh, no, 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 no. This is a... Uh, <laughs> I rolled a pirate cruiser. Oh, no, no, no. Nope. This is one of the, the, the ships that probably... This is a small fry. Like, uh, they're probably pretty hungry if they're picking on you. Because they, uh, they can they can they can pick on a lot bigger things than this. They probably go toe to toe with the navy at times. We got to jump. You just want to make the jump right here, right now. It, it's literally our best option, in my opinion. It will be a dangerous jump curious, with a Ross. high chance of miss jump. But go ahead. I was just going to ask, what is what is the risk when you're not a good five hours out? What happens if you if you make a risky jump? Uh, if you make a... Ah, and I found it. Uh, you are within um, uh, 10 diameters of this world, so you... Uh, if you roll a 3 or above on a 2d6, you misjump to a random location in space. You say random location in space. There's a lot of space. How I mean, far... You one, it'll be one parsec in a random direction somewhere. So gotcha. it could it could literally be like in dead black. Yeah, that that, that could be a death sentence. All right. In fact, in fact, there's a two and six chance, uh, four and six chance that it will be. Army strategists, oh. the the spacers are trying to calculate their options as this pirate cruiser <laughs> uh, zeroes in and demands that you lower your thrust before it vaporizes you. What do you think? Is oh. so we have no hard cargo. We have people, right? We have passengers. Is that correct? Yeah, you have ten passengers. Uh, can we dress them as crew? I mean, I feel like we'd probably be well over the crew requirements of a ship this size, right? Is there is there oh, any yeah. way that we can? I mean, like, how do we how we enhance? your claim that we have no cargo they will want to join they, they'll want to board your ship and verify it captain what do you feel about letting them on take a look around see we have nothing and betting on their good will and nature to let us go <laughs> Niall is not... just rubbing his metal hand along the edge yeah. of his blade making sure it's like sharpened yeah yeah I don't they're gonna take the ship yeah. So we either we either run till we get to that perimeter. Is 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 the chance of miss jump greater the closer you are, or is it always a you have to always roll lower than three? Uh, once you are ninety more diameters out, uh, so you need to get to. You need to travel for another two hours. Now at six minutes, that means that you will need to pass 20 turns of potential laser fire, and they travel, I think, at four or five G. So they will intercept you before you can make it that far. That's actually, I'm sorry, that's not true. They are they are over uh, here. Uh, they do have like 20 rounds of whatever laser fire on you, and they have multiple batteries because they're a cruiser. We're at, um, we're at we're at pretty good range though. I, aren't we? I also want to present some options here that that I think you would you would be able to see. Another option is actually uh, going. Let me drag everything this way. Let's say go back to Raleigh. Uh, and there's a <laughs> there's a, a a thing called uh, like atmospheric braking, and you just dive for the atmosphere, and then you hit nap of the Earth, and you use the planet. So that's an option, uh, and you could do that. If you could survive some rounds of laser fire, um, so that's, they, they got to be at pretty long range for their lasers, I would think. Uh, yes, they would be at a penalty. Yeah, and, and we have auto evade, so let's just. Yeah, we have to. We have to try running. Let's so, try that. All right. What What do you uh, all think? You want to try to yeah. run and die for the planet? Yeah, so there'd be, like, no way for us to, correct me, there'd be no way for us to just kind of, like, otherwise use the planet as a shield and still make the jump that we want to make. 
you could, but because what happens is uh, the jump drive is connect is is related to gravity, and if you mm -hmm. jump close to a planet, there's a overwhelming probability that you'll miss jump to a random uh, okay. random parsec. What's uh, Coleman's thoughts? Uh, he didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, he, he stayed on that radiated I... dust ball. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Major. I didn't realize that <laughs> you, this isn't the, the cozy, noble house that you were pampered growing up in. Like, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, at least at least in a gambling den, I can usually see if somebody's about to stab me, you know. <laughs> You're... <laughs> About to undergo the ultimate gamble. No, so now, now, you know, because I, I agree that you know, if we let them board us, that you know, you know, just saying, oh yeah, you you were telling the truth. You don't have cargo. They're not going to go away empty-handed. And so, yeah. um, you know, now, you know, there's also the radical idea of could we reboard them and try to wreak havoc on their ship How? i don't know what kind of crew they have question you, you'd the have approximately is, 13 ra uh, 13 turns or so of to get to them that they could fire on you before you could get there before you could do something like that how uh how effective is this cannon that you have it is not a ship gun it is it, it is a it, it, it is it's a, hard to miss point blank no 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 I'm, what i mean is it's a terrestrial gun. I mean, Ross can correct me in this if the particular case is different, but the scale of damage is entirely different between okay. land-based. Like, even though this is like a cannon, it's more like a Bradley. It's not like some kind of. It's gotcha. like a. It's like a twenty-five millimeter cannon or something. It's not a. Okay. Yeah. That kind not, of weaponry. It, it, weapon. It'll barely. Yeah. It'll barely affect their armor, from what I. Okay. Understand of traveler. Also, yeah. it's not mounted. We'd have to open up the actual cargo hold to use it. So. Um, I'm gonna advocate we go back down into the atmosphere, just turn this thing around, and try to evade their lasers for a couple of rounds. Uh, would they? But then what? Are they able to enter atmosphere after us? Once to to answer Chris's questions first. First, if uh, if you make it to atmosphere and dive to the planet. I, I'm going to look up the atmospheric braking rules. I think it's a pilot check. If you if you do it and nothing bad happens there, uh, it'd be like a, you know, a catastrophic, really risky deorbit. You're just like just going straight into the planet. Uh, if you can pull that off uh, with how fast your ship is, I'll say that it can get an app of the Earth very quickly. Once you get there, they're not going to find you. You're good. So this is this is a viable tactic, uh, but there is risk involved. I'm sorry, what were you saying, uh, AJ? I was asking if their ship is able to enter orbit. I think you answered that though, effectively. Yeah, not only can these ships enter orbit, they can also go in any form of atmosphere, including uh, radiation, you know, uh, clouds okay. and sea. They can go underwater as long as it's yeah. You mean our ship? Oh yeah, I guess I hadn't really thought about a cruiser, but I, I had never be, really uh, even thought about that. It's just as when you say a cruiser, right. you're talking about the this is like the big bulbous, basically like the shape of a globe almost with feet. Uh, I can give That's you the, the tonnage, uh, but uh, probably going to be 800, is my guess. Yeah, I, I think you're right, and and either way, they have a lot of gun emplacements, but they also yep. want to take you alive, so there is that too. Doesn't do any good to destroy you. So, anyways, uh, auto. I have another question. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Do we know if the Voden's eye, our spice Viking friends, have left the system yet? You do not know that. You could ask. <laughs> the Voden's eye is also no match for this thing, but the spay the Vikings might not care. <laughs> Um, not that I want to risk, you know, us getting our payment, but oh, wait, no, it if might we end be. up going back be. in, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If we go back into the atmosphere and I don't succeed on that piloting check, I don't know. If, like those are our best friends here on this horrible planet that might still be around. Do you want to try to make a uh, any station broadcast to see if you can reach the Voden's eye on an open channel? 
Didn't we have a comms link with uh You have a coordinate, unfortunately, I think. Oh. Okay. I mean, um, <laughs> yeah, we might as well. <laughs> okay, so let me frame the options, okay, and yeah. then and then let's do a vote so we can we can make a decision. So, uh, one option is to just make a dead run. Now, mathematically, uh, you have an overwhelming chance of getting knocked out of the the stars, and then they just scuttle your ship on that. Uh, another option is uh, to try to do some kind of trickery, invite them on board, try to kill them, try to use the gun, try to. You know, maybe lure the ship closer, use the gun just at a single point, maybe only use it at the boarding party, try to do some kind of trickery, and then turn things around and make a gamble where all of a sudden you're boarding a crew, pirate cruiser and taking it over or some crazy thing like that. That, by the way, would be the uh, the book's option. That's exactly what he would recommend if he were here. <laughs> um, and then finally, uh, perhaps the, the other option, or you could you could actually just try to negotiate with them. And maybe the, maybe it'll be fine. They're like you're not worth our time, and they take some money and leave. Maybe they take the ship though, and then they press you into a press gang. Lastly, you can dive for the planet and try to get occluded by the the planet's circumference as fast as possible while they're they're coming the other way. Uh, I'll give them two rounds of laser fire. Uh, is the auto evade software already loaded? Uh. No, we will have had the calculate, uh, the um, um, generate and navigate. Gener right? Generate and navigate. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it will take one round to load auto evade, so you will not have it the first round. Yeah. So you'll take two okay. rounds uh, with auto evade. What is the target that they need to meet? It, it, it applies a minus two. So it's six. Okay. Now, so could we stall for? They're one already. Round? I'm sorry. It'd be ten. You said. Go ahead, sorry. Um, if we need it to take one round to load up, uh, to, to, to be ready for us to use it, could we stall for a round by talking to them again, by reopening communications? I don't know what we would say, but... Seems really risky, but, uh, you know, tell me what how you think you do it. And also, lastly, well, first of all, it sounds like we're doing the last option. Is that right, uh, Major, 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 Major? The diving for cover? Is yeah. that... Does that sound like... Uh, yeah, I, okay. I, I mean, there's there's sure death, probable death, and then possible death, so... <laughs> we're gonna go, we're gonna go with possible today? <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool, cool, cool. Every day um, if that's the then. case, then uh, what do you all think about open broadcast uh, on a general frequency to gain the attention of the, the, the Space Viking uh, uh, freighter uh, the Voden's Eye. The Voden's Eye has sandcasters. Uh, I think I said it has a missile launcher, and it has two pulse lasers. But there's no guarantee they'll answer, and you might catch someone else's attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, the pirate vessel will hear that. It also takes time. It'll take like several minutes for the the transmission to reach. Here, here is a another risky option. Um, Y'all have a warrant on you. Is there any law enforcement that y'all could contact in order to add some extra chaos and maybe scare away these this cruiser? It'd be a different kind of heat on us. I mean, I think this thing would outclass most of most of what this planet could throw at us. Uh, uh -huh. Just because, based on what we learned in previous sessions, but I think I mean, I think our best option might just be the simplest of dive for cover and not and and not do anything else but that, but that's that would be my I, So I, we would basically have, wait, one round where we don't have the evasion software running and then on the second round we have hit, it They'll hit on an 8 to target a random system uh, the first round and a 10 on the second round and if you make it after two rounds uh, or approximately 15 minutes of flight, you'll make it into the atmosphere. And then I'm going to look up the rules for atmospheric braking. Um, Didn't you say they were going to be at a penalty, though, for the range? I'm sorry. That's right, because uh, they are over here, which puts them at uh, 350,000 kilometers. Uh, good point. 
Um, so, yeah. And are we going to rule out the possibility of trying to stall for that first round so that we can have our software loaded up for both rounds of escaping? While they're at this range, it's almost like having the software. But every round after this, they're just going to be gaining on us. I, I could try to confuse them and uh, with my brogue. I'm not. He's not. Niall's not a very charismatic person, but you know, uh, if I could just absolutely baffle them, maybe. We'll just make a break for it. If you can, if you can transmit them like a text message, just be like, "Eat our shorts." I wouldn't mind saying that on our way out. But what if what if I send something like uh, like this? <laughs> what does it say? I can't like it. I can't bring it up. Uh, it's a, it's uh, all right, Harry Cruiser. This is the the key of mercy. Uh, don't kin your last car. We have no cargo and nothing of value. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, I mean. <laughs> Uh, make a uh, so I feel like this would be difficult. So roll two d six to get under your social. No, no, no. Wait, no. This is clever. Do under your intelligence. Uh, that is a five, and I have an intelligence of ten. You you send that right away. They're waiting for your response. This takes time, so this takes around. Uh, the, these these transmissions they don't arrive right away so you wait you get it back uh, and there's confusion so you gain one round um, and then I'm trying to look up some mathy things I need for this uh, all right so the program's loaded now yeah the program is loaded if you want it to be are the calculations made you said we've been traveling for a couple hours uh, you mean for the jump? Yeah. Yeah, you could do that if you if you want. If you want to attempt to jump. Uh, now. No, no, no. I'm just making sure that we don't have to load generate again. Yeah, I, I, that makes sense to me. I'll say, yeah, yeah. You've already generated it, so that makes sense. Okay, so we can keep auto evade on, and we've already got navigate. So it's just a matter of running. Right. Uh, it's, there's an intercom system on the ship, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to just let all of our passengers know that Captain Bellamy accidentally left the oven on back on Raleigh, so we have to turn <laughs> around real quick. <laughs> so we are going to go down into atmosphere, fire up that uh, uh, software while we're at it. Gosh dang it. I can't find the, uh, let's see, attacker, game sequence, intruder, hit, critical hit, and scale. Ah, right, here it is. Uh, 25 and 50. Well, that's still not helpful. Um, but I'm just going to pick one for now because I, I, it's been a while. It's been a while. So let's see. It's greater than 25 bands, so it's at a minus 2. So it's a total of minus 4. Um, they will have to, uh, let's say an 8 plus, they will have to get a 12 to be able to hit you. Uh, so, here it I goes. I can try to call them again and install them. <laughs> They got an eight. Uh, they miss you. And um, another 6,000 seconds passes. And uh, you are occluded by the, uh, the planet, and the, the planet grows much larger, um, relatively speaking. Whoa. And uh, all of a sudden, the ship starts shaking. As, uh, as you make this very risky uh, entry into orbit. It says, atmospheric braking. Ships, uh, let's see. Oh, this is just for uh, reducing the vector length. So you slow down as soon as you smack into the atmosphere. Um, I still feel like this is going to be a check. I did announce that. I think it makes sense. Um, so you just have to make a regular pilot check. If you have gotcha. any modifiers, you can apply those, of course. All right, pilot 1 and Dexterity 10, would either of those modify this? Yeah, uh, you, you could get it on a 6. Gotcha. Or higher, I hope? Yeah, 6 or higher. <laughs> I got it on a uh, 7. 
Nice. All right. Uh, so you uh, you do this risky deorbit, and you can just you can feel the ship just like feels like it's going to tear itself apart, uh, and then like the ground is just like hurtling up at you, and you do this jackhammer where like, and then all of a sudden you're just like getting thrown into your seat through the deceleration as uh, as uh, as you push as much G's as possible to keep this thing from slamming into the the surface of the world. You manage to do so. Uh, almost like it's falling a, like a tower, and then all of a sudden it just like does this parabola before it hits the surface at about 10,000 feet. Uh, after going about you know 25,000 feet per minute, it just goes, and then you gain air again, and then uh, you get back to 1G, and you're in the atmosphere. And uh, yeah, at this point you can just hit the deck, and um, it would be easy enough to find something that would keep you from being seen. Where are we? That is a great question. Let's take a look where you are. Right in the middle of the Iterati control zone. <laughs> surrounded by... We just, we just toasted toasted the Baron's breakfast, I hope. Oh, he's all the way on. He's on another planet, so... Let's take a quick look here. It strikes me now, maybe we could have asked to buy some of their cargo. Pirates? <laughs> <laughs> we really need work, uh, actually. Can we just work for you? <laughs> you don't have to take so us you, over. We'll just got, join you, got, you, actually. It's pretty rough out here. Do you that have any ship, goods that, that need to be yeah. spent? <laughs> that ship has jump three. Like, you, you take passengers? or? <laughs> Um, bring up my map. Let's see. Where did you... Oh, interesting. I don't know that it you're... matters, but you're in the ocean. I mean, you're not in the ocean, but you're over the ocean. In fact, you probably could have just went in the ocean to yeah. keep from being Let's seen. Let's do that. We've done that before. Do it again. Okay, you go underwater, um, and that is where you are now, and uh, you are no longer seen by this vessel. You get you get some nice you get some nice ocean views going here. Uh, uh, How do we get off this planet? They're probably going to be up their way in, right? We'll wait for the next guys to take off from the spaceport and watch them, you know? <laughs> you know, we should send a signal. Somehow. Maybe bounce it around and, you know, hide its source or something like that, but uh, we, we ought to warn... We ought to warn the spaceport. Port that has a is warrant a... for our arrest, or yeah, I that mean, one. Do that not a that, at all. That's well, a good, I, good I, mark. I mean, yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, Marcello might be able. To, well, he's not here. Um. Anybody else got anything, any uh, computer skill? One of the majors? Uh, nah. Nope. I mean, I would apply a mechanical skill to being able to tinker with the actual, uh, the, the comms transmitter. Um, I might I, provide a complication for that, but... I mean, I, I have some mechanical training. Um, so I, I could do... I'll, I'll make you a deal with the devil. I'll give you three options. Uh, the first option is that you could attempt to just transmit it. Um, I'll make a roll on my end. You won't know the result. Um, depending on the transmission, people might be able to find your location. Uh, the second option is that you could go out in a vac suit and uh, make an adjustment to the, uh, the transmitter directly. Uh, and then the last option is uh, you could uh, attempt a difficult roll one time. 
Um, it would be very difficult. Um, that would be the, you know, use your mechanical one. You need to get a 10 plus. Okay. Well, it was just a thought. It's a little bit of my conscience. I mean, it, I feel like the the good deed can go in your favor. I feel like that'd be good. If we send the call, they know where we are, but they won't know where we will be. Right? So, we gotta keep moving. But... Yeah. Maybe we... <laughs> maybe we send a call. You know what? We can target a transmission, can't we? You know, we got... We can, we can just do, like, a tight beam or something like that. Yeah? What are you thinking? Straight... Let's contact that so and so over at uh, over at uh, dang it, Golan. And yeah, over in Golan. But the name of the company always escapes me. Nanterry uh, Holdings. Nanterry. Um, uh, you know, I mean, that guy, at least, even if it's broken, he seemed to have some kind of a conscience, and he used to be a traveler, so maybe he'll find a way to get it to the right people. We can just make it a single transmission. We don't have to talk to them live or anything. Just package something up and send it along and then be on our way. All right. Uh, what do you all think about that? I prefer to stay quiet, but I mean, I'm not... I don't have a... too big of a concern about it. Captain I mean... Bellamy, both in and out of character, I'm willing to put it up to a vote. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, all right, we got one for sending a, a message to uh, Nanterry Holding. Uh, we've got one for uh, trying to make a, a gambit to see if it could modify the transmitter in some way. Uh, and uh, oh, sorry, I meant for a vote to do anything or nothing. I think we're. I think everybody's agreed to do something. I think, yeah. That, uh, so far, but uh, what do you think, uh, uh, Nal? Uh, Work with a I mean, shady past partner, or take the risk of transmitting it in some way, with possibly altering the signal. Your your gut was to call this guy. I think we should listen to your gut. Okay, and then Chapman. I agree. I think it can, that's a nice compromise. Is just reaching out to the Nanteri guys. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah. If you, um, who is that? Uh, on comms now, uh, now if you yeah. send out a, a type beam transmission, uh, ultimately you're not going to know necessarily. Even if you receive something, it's going to be some sort of query, you know. So you're not going to know if it works. But the whole point is to try to do your part. So um, we'll see. What do we do from here? Do we just wait for? few hours and leave a day then leave do we you know uh do we move somewhere else what's 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 the next step my instinct is to say we stay put unless we went unless we went into the unless we went into the ocean uh within clear sight of land or something like that um like you know there was like a seaside resort <laughs> and people and their in their deck chairs could have seen us splash down, or if it was just out in the middle. If if I feel if we feel like we're relatively isolated, I say just stay put for a day. How will that uh how will that hit our calendar? Are we gonna be like mid jump when the 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 toll comes due? Or a day won't ma matter too much. Uh, one jump takes almost a full week okay so uh, and, it, and it's like a little bit of margin on, on the week it could be longer it could be a little shorter gotcha and we we have uh what roughly a month before payday or, or... we got about three hey, weeks i think okay or no he said would you say three jumps four jumps i can't remember four what jumps said. i think actually yeah so so in, in addition to which we've got more than enough fuel to to keep operations going I think for another week and most of two weeks so amazingly we'll the, the terrorist attack at the starport was just two days ago in game time 
<laughs> that is crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Oh man. So, so is everybody okay right. with that? Staying here for what's one day? more day spent underwater? I guess we've seen every sight this planet has to offer at this point. <laughs> Nile heaves a sigh and slides his sword back in the scabbard. <laughs> <laughs> Fly me closer so I can hit them with my sword. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll offer Niall a sparring match in the empty cargo ah. hold. I will nice. offer Coleman a bet that Bellamy is going to kick his ass. I'll, I'll, <laughs> so I'll, I'll, take, I'll take whatever action. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I am I'll, a gambler, so... Yeah. All of the... All of the the relief workers uh, having arisen terrified underwater having no idea what's going on uh, pretty sure that their lives were in danger and then they say well uh, let's do some sparring practice and then you start taking bets are absolutely terrified and they wish to be off this ship um, anyways one thing that you could do if you want is you could scoop water and then crack it and have the fuel processor work on it for a day to talk we're yourself full, off I guess yeah yeah, we. I think if anything, we, we're missed. I think it'll, like, it'll give you like two days. It, it'll literally give you two days. That's what it'll do in case something were to happen for some weird reason. So, uh, all right. As well. Yeah, uh, and then what? You arise back out of the water and head back into the black. Is that the plan? Oh, we're not going to resolve our sparring match. Say, <laughs> Niall, Niall's going to send a message to uh, to Coleman and be like, "Hey, what are the odds?" I mean. <laughs> Guy with a big sword, brawny guy. I, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna bet on him. <laughs> All right. Uh, how many credits do I have to actually bet? This is this is a tradition for us. This is how we get to know new folks on our ship. Is is through the so, uh, celebrated art of gambling <laughs> and and sword fighting and occasionally sword fighting. Do you all? How do you all want to do it? Do you want to just do a roll off, or do you want a gambling game, or, or what, do you, what do you want? Or do you want to use the gambling rules from Star Town Liberty, or what? Let's just uh, do it like the duel that we fought before with uh, other dude, except we won't be. I won't be shoving my blade through his throat at the end of it. Hopefully. Sure. No, I'm in the gambling part, where the two are oh. placing bets on you. I was just gonna do a hundred credits, and I say Bellamy oh, will win. Yeah, you course. say that. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll take a hundred credit action on that. The uh, the aid workers do not participate. Uh, Lothak is really <laughs> interested, but she doesn't have any money. Um, you all don't pay her. No one's actually gotten paid for whatever that's worth. You have a group pool to try to cover things, and you, you don't know that you'll ever be able to pay your bills, so no one's ever actually gotten a payday so far. <laughs> you guys don't know that. <laughs> but anyways, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, start. let's just chuck uh, three rounds of d6s and burn through right. some endurance this is how you get paid on this ship is by winning gambles <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see where's my and then what oh everybody's in a vac suit so that's uh one person has a broadsword and the other one has a cutlass cutlass yeah um if you all would do the math let me try to pull up the chart. So I've got a cutlass of... I'm at a plus four overall. Uh... Versus cloth. Well, I don't know. I, I just mean my raw rolling with my... with um, I get the strength bonus for the cutlass, and I, I have a cutlass skill of two. Okay. Well, I, uh, a cutlass versus cloth is at minus three. Okay, so plus one overall. So I've only rolled one, so that's uh, 12. And you rolled a 12? You rolled a uh, 6, a 9, and 11. Yeah, and. Hmm. Oh, you get two 11s and an 8. <laughs> I think I lost. Yeah, and we'll say that it takes the damage, you know, but it won't kill you mm -hmm. or hurt you or whatever. So oh, yeah, yeah. So roll for damage, obviously. I'm trying to find the the table. Sorry. Oh, uh... What, Cloth, you, I found it. Broadsword. I, I think you have a plus one. Zero. Oh, zero. Right. Uh, 
Um, because I don't think I actually have any skills in broadsword, correct? You have a plus one to broadsword. Plus one? You... Okay. Yeah. Because you... Uh... I don't you think do... I rolled anything to give... that gave me a blade. Oh, we never did that. Do you want to roll for that? Uh... What do you mean? I don't think I got any. Uh, we never rolled results. your. We never rolled your obsession, did we? Oh uh, no! Uh, roll we a didn't. two d six. Oh, that's a one, and that's another. A five right. and a six. You got it. So you got broadsword one, and if you want to take rifle, you'll have rifle four. Yes. So. Okay. Cool. Rifle four. Good lord. <laughs> He does this one thing really well. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's also really smart. He's He's got some interesting things, yeah. Um. Okay, so broadsword one, so yeah, then I'd be at a plus one, so. But being an army guy, as he just found out, was not super useful in outer space, uh, where his sword and smarts and tactics and APC driving skills aren't super useful. <laughs> so. All right. So is that the end of it, or, or, or what is the what is the result? I don't did, know. Did you uh, want us? Sorry, did you say you wanted us to roll damage just to figure out? Yeah. So the, let's see. Did you already? So AJ rolled first. You got a six, a nine, and you have to hit at a an eleven. An eleven. Okay. So you hit once. Uh, so you can roll. What is that? Four d six for a broadsword. Uh, three, I think. But that's three d six for a broadsword. I think so. Scrolling through the the book. It's a forty six for a broadsword. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, for I, a broadsword? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I thought because uh, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's one dice less than a laser cannon. Uh, Twenty That's damage. A high roll. All right. Uh, and since and let me ask you this: Who proposed this fight? Bellamy. All right. Roll for damage, Bellamy. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so we're just doing first hit, right? Yeah, yeah, we're just doing first hit. Okay. All right. Does six bring you down? That's the question. If it if it attacks your uh, endurance. Uh, if it hits my endurance, I have. Where's my sheet? I got it right here. I have seven endurance. Ah. It does not bring him down. So Bellamy strikes first and uh, wins him. And you have one round to at attack, and you do on your turn. And you bring Bellamy down in a, in a riposte with your broadsword in one strike. I was going to put money on him. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Bellamy, you, right. found a, you found a match. Now, in your, in your defense, Bellamy, he does have a really stupidly gigantic sword. So there is that. <laughs> I mean, I hit often, but when I do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my well captain fun. is, you know, tired. He he was fighting a Viking <laughs> earlier, so, you know. And he's elderly. I will put that in the results. Uh, let's see. Who was betting on uh, Nile? I bet on Nile. Okay, so let's see. Coleman got plus 100 credits. All right. And uh, let's see, Chapman got minus 100 credits. That's your first paycheck, Major. Welcome aboard. <laughs> <laughs> I see this is how I'm going to have to earn my money. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never get away from this life. Admit it. <laughs> All right. So I was uh, betting on uh, Bellamy, so I think I lost money. <laughs> All right, let's see if your trip into space goes better this time. Yeah. Good Lord. All right, folks, take two. I'm going to grab a drink real quick. There better not be any pirates, Vikings, privateers, sailors, whatever else you find out in the ocean. System security. I don't know if there is any system security. Do I need to roll another navigation check? 
Uh, yeah, actually, this would be a new navigation check. You'll you'll do the you'll load all the same stuff again. You'll generate a flight plan. You'll go through all the procedures. Uh, uh, we now shouldn't hold have the, to generate hold the flight plan. Fair enough. Hold the results. Don't tell us the results, and uh, don't roll it in the open, if you would please. Okay, hold your uh, results of your uh, navigation check because the uh, it might be really interesting. What's that doing? What did I come here to do? Um, oh yeah, the uh, starship counters. Eight. Very well. Uh, you encounter nothing. Just the dark. As the uh, the planet begins to to fade and uh, and shrink behind you, farther and farther away for the next five hours, until you reach the safe jump point in space. Hit it. All right. And I, uh, you want my results now? No, no, not yet. Oh, okay. uh, and there's a couple of other checks. Who's going to be the ship's engineer right now? Uh, Be Be Bellamy's, ha yeah, Bellamy's happy to. All right. Sit in. Um, I, it doesn't say this, but I'm going to change this. You can apply a engineering to this. Now, this will be what allows you to do it, actually. Uh, but I don't see anything because you have an engineer, you're due on maintenance, but we throw it anyways because if you get this wrong, your ship can just die in the water. So, roll a 2d6. It'll be interesting if you get a 12. The, uh, the ship's drives are humming along. They're going, they're doing real well. Um, uh, Chapman's maneuver into the atmosphere went really well, and it didn't even stress anything out. The parity between the two uh, the two drives is is actually really good. The health of the engines is good. Um, I'll give her a pat. Yeah, that's um, a good lady. Now, uh, let's see. So you you hear the uh, the countdown uh, as everybody's secure for the jump. And, uh, and then finally, oh, it's not letting me. the panel, uh, you can see space kind of like change around you and it turns into this miasma as you enter into a, a pocket, a sort of alternate dimension of space. And you're here again in the jump for an unknown period of time. Is there anything that you want to do for the next week? I think... Am I able to do my education sessions during transit? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that would be the ideal time to do them. I figured. Might, might uh, be the so might be the we... opposite. It would be the case is you know if you're in some adventure like we were on rally, that would be lost time. It's uh, time to start keeping track of those. I think that is a money cost. I recall. Let's see, self improvement, education. Uh, in general, such courses have a base price of C, uh, 50 credits per week. Generally, one session per week is taken, although two per week are possible. Uh, so, yeah, I could pay out 100 credits to do two sessions during this transit. All right, Chapman studying. Is there anything else anybody wants to accomplish? Uh, counsel with the, uh, with, uh, you know, your passengers or with each other? Anything you need to hash out? No, everything's cool. Well, you know, oh, okay. I mean... Now that we're not a little bit under the gun, I guess I do want to follow up with Isabella on who exactly this lawyer is since we got a week. All right, you do that. Uh, do you do it privately? No, there's no more secrets. I mean, we've been together for, you know, I know it's only been a couple of days since we made Planetfall, but I mean, nonetheless, uh, her? what's that? Didn't we buy her at a slave market, technically? <laughs> True. Well, no, we didn't end up paying. We paid. You know what? We we you paid the her. lead. You stole her. We, at a we paid. No, we paid the lead price, right? Yeah. <laughs> after fair and squares. Yeah, silver or lead, and and we paid lead after all. Uh, all right. So is this like a ship's meeting kind of thing? Who who's all at this meeting? I have reasons I'm asking all this stuff. I, I would definitely like to be on this because you know I wasn't expecting to be signing on as a criminal. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think we'll have it in okay the 
in the downstairs common room and just invite Isabella and Velez and and then the, the regular crew. Okay, that's over here, right? No, that's the upstairs. Oh, my bad. Yeah. It's, it's got Passenger a, decks above. The belly on top. Weird. All right, let me uh, put some people in here. Uh, she uh, feels similarly after everything that they have gone through. She also keeps no secrets from her peoples. So there's ten of them, including Velez. And uh, they gather and they sit down. And uh, at this point, this has become somewhat home for them. And Marcello is no longer here to make them grilled goop and beer and uh, make them, you know, stock expired teas and things so they uh they make what coffees and teas they can with what they got and they they sit and they say all right so uh isabella says this so debar is that right yep it's on the way to flamarian hopefully we encounter no more problems there I somehow don't think that you left the oven on with whatever just happened um, when we tried to leave that planet back there. No, we were waylaid by pirates. We barely escaped with our lives. I guess I didn't want to know. And that's happened more than once since you all have been on board. You're right. Don't tell me. Okay. Uh, until later, I suppose. Uh, anyways, uh, we're just two jumps away from Flammarion. Um, I also wanted to propose, uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, um, at Debar or Flammarion or anywhere else, uh, once Velez and I join your crew formally, uh, as crew members of, uh, the Lady of Mercia, uh, company, um, free company, I, I, um, we can attempt to coordinate things for you. Trade deals, work with agencies, uh, local government, uh, any kind of organization. These are things that we're very well trained in. And out of character, they have, uh, she has like a really high social stat. She's not a noble, um, but she is, uh, and they're very intelligent. Those are the things they're good at. They're useless in a fight. Education, intelligence, and social. Those are good things they're good at. Yeah. Well, tell us more about this lawyer. Yes, I um, I have uh, worked with him in the past. Um, we're not exactly on the best of terms right now, but I believe we'll be able to work through it. Um, he's named uh, Carl Rakamundra. And, um, Chapman, you know that name. Frantically looking through my notes, I, I do, do I? <laughs> I don't think, uh, I think it was something where his name was... You know his name, but I don't think I gave it, like, you... Anyways, he's the attorney that you had. He, he was your attorney that busted you out of jail. Okay, he was, uh... Oh, what's his name? Uh, guy from Aliens, <laughs> the slime balls. Yeah. Oh, Paul Reiser, Burke. It was Burke? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Burke. Burke. Um, glad to hear if he can get us out of anything as long as we lower our standards. <laughs> we have to lower them again? <laughs> How much is it going to cost? Uh,. I... All I had to do last time was just throw somebody else under the bus, you know, sign a uh, uh, right on the dotted line, claiming that I saw something that didn't really happen. <laughs> that does sound like Carl. And if I had to guess, um, I would say that we'll be paying in labor. What, what are we going to be paying for again? My hope is that um, Carl will help us act as a legal shield long enough to be able to find who is causing this and get to the bottom of what I believe is a fraud, some kind of scheme in the Iterati sector. 
as soon as our names are cleared at the Iterate Barony, uh, the warrant will be gone. Okay. Well, I wonder what kind of work good old Carl has for us. I don't know what Carl's been up to for the past, because... Uh, Oh, wait, do you say that in character? Do you mention... Uh, oh, always. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Chapman, do you mention that you know him? Like, uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, she, so she says, oh, uh, you you know uh, Mr. Rakamundra? Uh, a little bit. Um, we He helped me out of a jam once, and I like to think I might have helped him out of a jam, at least by the sound of things. I see. I had lost track of him. Um, I, there was some um, work. Uh, he sort of migrated his way. Uh, um, uh, sort of migrated his way spinward, much like yourselves in a way. Um, and so I, I wasn't sure, but I knew that he he was on Flamarian. Um, Flamarian, as you all may well know is an imperial planet and that brings up one of my concerns um it there is a small possibility that in passing through flamarian customs uh, a message may have made it out from iterate to flamarian in time by one of the experts it's one of the main routes uh that uh, uh connects the bowman arm to the rest of the imperium uh the iterate uh sector to the domain of Deneb. I'm going to sort of open up a data pad and have a look at my star chart. And yeah, let me bring up the star and, chart for and everybody say, else uh, we're kind of looking at that. Um, yeah, and say, well, by my calculation, if they're going to use the, the network, the fastest way to do that is to go back to Iterati, give a message to a boat there that jumps to Flamarian. Either yes. way, that's that's a two jump, that's a two jump operation, and that's assuming they're making their best speed on getting the word out. I agree, and beyond that, I don't think that any news will travel from their rally colony into Edorati, be processed, and be acted on, then sent by X boat in any due speed. I only say that there is a very small chance that this could be the case. Yep. Well, we really, uh, our choices are extremely limited so i think i think you've given us our best chance of getting out of this mess one way or the other at least at the moment so then the plan is to simply register our, our vessel and uh go ahead and register a, a flight plan with uh um uh oh gosh i forgot what the uh department is called at the at the uh starport that does flight plans Say that again? The department at a starport that does flight plans. Astro... I don't know if it's in my notes, unfortunately. Just having a brain fart. I can't remember off the top of my head. It's, um, not, it's not astrographics, but anyways, the department at the starport that does flight plans and can give you world data. Uh, you know, general world, world data and follow flight plan. Um... She doesn't know you have software. So she, she says, so uh, we'll register, pay our fees, um, go through customs, oh, yeah, yeah. just as normal then. We can, that... we, can, we can generate our own flight plans. Oh, very handy. Very well. All right, well, um, I suppose that's really all I wanted to know is what, what exactly we were getting ourselves into a little bit uh, once we get to Flumarian. Got to get through to bar first, though. Yes. I think it may take me a couple of days to arrange a meeting uh, with uh, Mr. Rakamundra. I see. Well, in the meantime, I have some excellent spaceport bars to recommend everyone else in the crew except for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, all, both of you uh, would be familiar with Flamarian. So you probably, you can assume you probably don't know about the whole Bowman arm and all the Spinward marches. Uh, you can know whatever you know. So if you know stuff about those worlds, then 
you know, anything that's not a story spoiler or a secret, you know, or something beyond year 11, 14. But, um, uh, but all, but both of you would know Flammarion is basically Space Vegas. It's a pla it's a high port called Startown Liberty, and it is a dirty, dirty place. But you can also, it's a Class A starport, uh, and you can buy, buy and sell just about anything there, and you can find a job. So it's one of the main places you ended up when you came out here. Okay. Well, thanks, Isabella. Much appreciated. And uh, um, oh, I'd, I'd like to, you know, ask about, you know, I, her initial proposition was that, you know, we had to pay her uh, companions to put them up. And, you know, what are we looking at there? Well, um, a hotel stay uh, is about um, 30 credits for some hotels that I can think of per night. Uh, would it be possible um, to... Is it possible to get a loan, say, for 20,000 credits? A loan, you said? Of course. We would pay it back and then some. We will pay off our debt. I just want to take care of my people. Let's talk when we get to Flammarion. <laughs> Very well. And, uh... Twenty thousand, man. We just keep bleeding. <laughs> you gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> that's what I keep. That's what I keep believing in my soul. <laughs> I don't know if I could go on otherwise. How well do y'all trust these people, or are they a uh, a uh, I trust them. concern? I trust them. I trust them. They they've we're in the same boat, quite literally. Does their organization have the capability of, you know, paying back this loan if we were make it? I mean, I understand they run a non-profit operation, but... Yeah, actually... Well, I, 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 I think it's an NGO, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's you, like a... If you ask that question uh, during that, we'll call it a crew conference, I don't know what we'll call these meetings uh, scenes, but if you, if you ask that question... Um, Coleman um, what they'll say uh, first of all they were supposed to come to Eterade. This uh, initially the whole point of them going to rally was to actually make money by dropping these people off uh, and everything kept going sideways so that's kind of how all this started uh, and then when they got there they were told that they actually didn't have a job they didn't have any uh they had no commission by the the Iterati, um colony to work there. And then, when they returned later, they were declared terrorists. And, uh, and the crew of the Lady of Mercy were declared accomplices. Now, they are from, um, I believe I said Mora. Um, Fornice, or something like that. And um, so, if you manage to make your way trailing... Eventually, you will get people that know who they are. Uh, but you would need to make it all the way over there for it to matter. That's about... Which is something that... 80 light years I wanted away. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those are future problems. Indeed. Have y'all right. asked them if there's anyone who was out to, like, get them? Or is... Like, is it, is this, are they being set up or is this just situation to situation, just coincidence? Bad, bad fortune. Yeah, you, you all weren't here for this, but everyone got set up. That was kind of what actually went down. They, uh, they tried to take on a job and then they got set up as the fall people for working with foreigners and terrorists and stuff and they didn't actually do it. And, and it's both the aid workers and the crew. They all got set okay. up. Yeah. Um, boy, one day I'd like to have a word with uh, with that guy. The um, the agent that works for worked for Nanterry Holdings, supposedly. Yeah. Oh boy. Yukon. Yukon. I'd love to have a word with that guy. 
Yeah. Uh, oh well. Maybe in another life. All right. So uh, a week passes, and whew, and you enter ex. You I'm sorry. You exit jump space. I assume you use your SOP, and you're all strapped in and in your vac suits and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what happens. Now, if you would please, whoops, that's not what I wanted. And remember, oh, and I forgot, by the way, entirely, each of us forgot about the existence of the maneuver program, which is actually required to control the ship. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Who yeah, and the what now? The maneuver program, so. You so couldn't, you couldn't as, change you course for the first round. Correct. So, um, the uh, standard, the SOP for coming out of jump is maneuver and auto uh, evade loaded. Interesting. All right. Um, yeah, by the way, <laughs> uh, well, actually, you read the book, AJ, <laughs> but they have like eh. 1970s computers, so you can only load like two programs at a time. Uh, and there's the suite of various programs, so you can only either fly and evade, or you can generate a flight plan and jump, but, but you can't do all that at once. But mm. uh, anyways, um, so yeah, you exit jump, and let's roll and see what happens. First, well, first of all, uh, the navigation roll. What did you get? Ten. A ten. All right. Uh, went very well. Um, so I will say that you managed to make it in... 166 hours. How far from the planet? I'll take a look at the solar system in a second. Here are my notes on Debar. Desert world, one spaceport, hunting ground, big game space bears. I don't remember what that means. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Big game bears. Yeah, they, they got the they got the two ton bears that they uh, that the uh, imperial rich guys from Fumerian come out and uh, and do their uh, safaris, and they got a big hunting lodge. It's basically like the spaceport and the hunting lodge. Even though even though it's a, even though it's a class B spaceport, they don't have they didn't have anything. They didn't have anything worth. Or anything. No. Did we get clothes? Did we find clothes or something crazy? I think we found... No, Marcello went into the gift shop and perused all the, the various bespoke bear products, but there wasn't anything of interest. It was just... Uh, Coleman, do you think if I dare Niall to go out and hunt bears with his, his broadsword, he'll do it? I'd rather he do it with his rifle. Yeah. <laughs> Probably use rifle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apparently, he's very direct, but he's not dumb. <laughs> apparently, now you can just like open, vent the Atmo in the cargo bay, and just have him there in a vac suit and stick his gun out the the ship, and he can just take out the cockpit. It's like that episode <laughs> of Friends, <Fire's> right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, Debar, Debar, is a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the bears. <laughs> the bears, exactly. <laughs> it is a, a single um, star system uh, with a dwarf star, and there are uh, nine planets and a gas giant. Uh, I'm sorry, there are six planets and a gas giant and two asteroid belts, two system asteroid belts, so quite large asteroid belts with dwarf planets, and uh, Debar is the closest to the sun. So you drop, um, not that, so 166 hours, and you you make it within, um, let's see here. Um, 
you make it um, within uh, gotta get a calculator out. It's been a while since I had all this down last time and then we haven't been in space in a while so I've kind of Yeah, okay. You make it uh, 2 million kilometers away. Um, I'm sorry, 1.5 million kilometers away. So it's uh, 7 hours. So uh, pretty dang close to right within the safe jump distance. Uh, it was a pretty good, not perfect, but, all, but pretty dang good jump uh, that made it pretty close to where you wanted to go. And um, so... You can detect some specific information about the planet, your sensors, from where you are. Uh, it's a little bit further away than that. We'll make it smaller. But I'll put it out on the edge of the radar screen. And then, um, what do you do as soon as you come in, uh, as soon as you arrive in system? Oh, that didn't show up. Scan. You scan right away. Okay. Uh, you scan the system, you find uh, what I had mentioned, um, I can give you more information. I think you have a ship's library, but you don't have it loaded, no. right? You do not no. have a ship's I, library. I had, to, I had to forego the library uh, in favor of the Generate program. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Uh, the nearest planet is a, uh, a barren moon, uh, which is about 600, uh, about 450, I'm sorry, it's about... 350 million kilometers away. It would take you um, two or three days to get there uh, under 1G. Um, you don't detect anything nearby uh, for the first couple of hours. Is there anything else you want to do as soon as you arrive in system? No? Okay. Now, after two hours, so you're now about five hours away from the planet, and you are, um, uh, you are, uh, entering the no, not, not safe jump range, like you're entering a hundred diameters away from the planet, uh, where you would start being penalized to attempt to jump if you tried to depart. And the, uh, the... Details of the world become more clear, and a ship appears on radar and does not transmit anything. It is a 200-ton trader. Is there like a little wave or handshake kind of thing we can do? Say hi? You could transmit. You could also ident or beacon your transponder. Um... To torch out to say, "Hey, look, I'm here." Um, that would be omnidirectional, however, um, where you could uh, you could do multiple different types of signals, including those that would be received as just a message. Well, it's a trader. Are they leaving or, or arriving? Sorry, good question. Their vector indicates that they're coming towards you and leaving the planet of Debar. Let's let's contact them and see if. Uh what's good there anything good for sale anything we should be warned about <laughs> who's yeah. the comms officer is uh now yep i'll right. open a, a channel and uh kind of ask just that like hey how's the uh how's the flying uh how's the road quite rudely they alter their vector and they uh avoid you and they don't respond More room for us. I'm ready to find out that the space bears took over the whole planet. <laughs> Things just get worse and worse. <laughs> Moon bears. Mm -hmm. Cocaine bears the planet. <laughs> Some junky trader went down in the woods. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, another two hours pass. Uh, nothing else happens. Uh, the planet of uh, Debar looms larger. Uh, it only has a low port, 
uh, so you'll need to actually enter the plant's atmosphere. So once you get close enough to the planet, you are now within one diameter of the planet. It would now be very high risk to attempt a, attempt a jump here. You're about to enter the atmosphere when uh, you receive a call from the starport. Um, uh, traffic approaching, approach vector for, uh, for starport Debar. This is Debar Control. Please identify uh, your, with your transponder code and announce, uh, welcome to Debar. Cap, did we do it? No choice. All right. We'll show identification and answer the hail. All right, you send um, your transponder code. Um, and, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. That's it. All right. Uh, after you announce yourself and send your transponder code, they say, Lady of Mercia, free trader, welcome to Debar. Uh, you're cleared to land Pad 3. And uh, this is all happening as you're beginning your deorbit and start, or your, uh, your entry, uh, sorry, into the atmosphere. This one will be smoother than last time. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> In Mongoose 2, I, you actually technically are supposed to make a check every time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if everybody does it every single time, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think it would be funny because you have the effects, right? So you could have an effect that could tell the referee something's going on, which would be funny. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Let's see here. To bar. I need to get a spaceport thing up. land on the pad. Uh, Debar is a heavily forested planet. You can see I that. I can't see anything, by the way. If you have anything on the screen, I don't oh, see anything. I'm sorry. Let me see if I can fix that. Well, you should be able to. I see a yellow image or, or you know, yellow colored spaceport. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm, it's not letting me move it for some reason weird me neither oh there we go yep hmm. i see it now well anyways uh as you enter debar's atmosphere you can see that debar is a heavily forested planet it's got a thin atmosphere but it also exists at a standard 1g uh the uh the starport is uh very well developed um and um it's uh, it's only a hop, skip, and a jump away, several days away at 1G from the nearby gas giant. Uh, but this place is otherwise mostly uh, apparently uninhabited. Uh, you can see beyond the forests, far off on the horizon, vast tracts of desert with an uh, invasive clay that mixes with the atmosphere, causing the skies to be a terracotta, uh, as if a paintbrush were terracotta mixed with a vibrant green in the atmosphere. Um, you can see that this uh, dust from the distant deserts uh, wafts heavily and lays on the on the forest canopy, uh, causing a kind of, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, a, a, a taint. Uh, it's a, um, be toxic. A it's toxic. Um, and anyways, uh, let's see. Um, you land on the starport, and um, things are around. also the starport itself is this geometric design, and it hangs over top of uh, a bunch of the forest, uh, as if it's just this looming cliff uh, that's hundreds of feet across. And, uh, and it just hangs out into the air hundreds of feet over the forest floor uh, with rocks and cliffs and waterfalls underneath it. Um, you land on a pad. And um, 
What is your goal here? I'll describe some things and then you can tell me if you want to do anything here in Debar. Uh, I suppose one question is, do you even want to leave the ship? Or do you just want to pay your birthing fee and get gassed up and just head out? Is that the, that's the first question. Uh, we, we gotta look for cargo. I know there's not a large chance, but... Okay. We, we gotta, so we gotta so look for something. So you're gonna disembark. You're gonna leave the ship. Okay. So, as soon as you leave the ship on the pad and enter through the, through the, uh, uh, the, um, the umbilical into the apron, uh, into the, into the starport, they call it the hunt port, and you can see signs everywhere, except this place is mostly vacant. Uh, but you can, you can see that uh, the interior is decorated in places to look like a lodge with fake synthetic wood and stuff everywhere. Um, there is a, a long corridor of these aprons that could accommodate all sorts of starships. And I'm sorry I forgot to mention this. There are four starships that are docked here. Um, you could see them on the way in. A, a, a 400 ton merchant ship, a, a 200 ton uh, some oddly shaped ship that you probably couldn't identify just from your approach, uh, unless somebody tried to make a, a check on it or something. Um, and a another 400 ton trader. And um, you can see as you leave the aprons, there's like a customs area, but the customs area doesn't have like a, it doesn't act as a barrier. Instead, it acts like how the way a metro would work where you would descend down into the customs and that would allow you to like leave the starport if you wanted to but if you stay up on the starport there is a uh, a coffee shop um a gift shop uh the astrographics place where you can you know get information uh, or file flight plans there's a TAS here uh if anybody has a TAS membership there's a a bar and that's all you see here. <clears throat> Would I be able to get data on the uh, that outgoing trader from the Astrographics? Um, you can get basic data just from the departures board. That's also uh, as you uh, the the answer is yes. Basically, yes. You can see the ships that are coming and going. Um. If they offer things, uh, you're looking for the merchant vessel. Which the one, one that we sort of want to intercept course with that kind of blew us off when we hailed them. Oh, okay. No, they left. Yeah. Um, you would need to ask around. The primary way of getting information is going to the bar. Okay. I'm already on my way. Let's stick together. Okay. You want to go in the bar? The right. bar and the bar, the the bar. Anyways, sorry. It's the lose, bar bar. Lose points for that. DB squared. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, the cool thing about this bar, uh, it is um, let me find it here. It's called the Lanik Root uh, Trading Lounge, and this is a bar for travelers. Uh, it is a, a bar that kind of emphasizes starflight and ships and. All kinds of doodads and, and task symbols and imperial stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of paraphernalia on the walls and hanging from the ceilings of like a, a Beowulf trader just like yours. And um, uh, yeah, it's like a tra it's a traveler themed bar. And um, there are uh, only two groups of people in here right now uh, hanging out at the bar. There's a uh, there are, um, wait, no, I'm wrong. There are, uh, let's see. There are three groups of people. There's, uh, six people that are clearly off duty cops. They're still in uniform. There are four travelers and you know it because they, uh, because they're wearing vac suits like you. They just got off a ship. So they're wearing all their, their trappings of being a traveler. And then there's a, a, a table of four aliens. Uh, and I don't... You can tell me if you've ever seen these aliens, if your character has. Uh, they do operate in this part of space, but um, 
you've probably heard of them. They're called Aslan. Um, and they sort of look like these, like, hulking, like, hunched, mossy, furry, hairy things uh, with long proprioceptors that jut out from their, their face and, uh, and ears and arms and places. And uh, you can hear a, 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 a vibrating humming sound that, that is sort of like the, them speaking to each other. And just slight movements. One second. Uh, um, what are you? Uh, I'm gonna toss the ball over to Nal. What are you? Uh, what are you thinking? Um, I'm mostly thinking if this is a lodge that caters to military officers going on hunting expeditions for dangerous prey. I'm wondering if maybe they might have something here that you can't get other places. Like, I don't know, like uh, electronic sites or something like that. Who do you ask about that? Um, I mean, what better place in a bar than the, uh, the bartender? All right. Let me check on the bartender. Whoa. Let's see here. Did Isabel and her party stay on the ship? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. If I were to invite them to accompany us, would that change their minds? Isabella and Velez would accompany you, but uh, but ever, all the rest of them are pretty skittish after everything they've been through. Fair enough. Well, we have to... If they're going to be permanent members of our crew, Isabella and Velez have to... Uh, accommodated with our our standard operating procedure indeed yeah um they have to go through our hazing rituals if you will <laughs> and you don't have to start by throwing your first punch at those cops over there but <laughs> <laughs> you'll win a lot of points if you do <laughs> nice uh yep that is a way to start the campaign out um <laughs> uh yeah so the bartender there uh Nal, uh, it's a it's a male now. The thing about Valani humans and uh, humans in the galaxy in general is there's a bit of a controversy about what makes a human and what makes a person. And uh, humans are so drastically different depending on where they're from that in some cases they stop resembling humans. And the bartender you have in front of you here is like that. He's got a strange, square, misshapen face with green air, uh, hair and opalescent eyes uh, that have a, a kind of reptilian quality to them. Uh, nonetheless, he wears a classy 1970s... What do you call the... I keep asking what 1970s wear is. It keeps weirdly coming up in all my games. I don't know why. <laughs> I know it's a leisure suit, but it's the... Yeah, I guess a leisure suit, just like the jacket with the shirt. And uh, he's, he's, he's got a classy outfit he's wearing. And... Um, okay. Yeah, and he's, he All sees you approach and he says, Ah, hey there, traveler. What can I get for you? Well, something for maybe uh, something to drink, something... Uh, just clean water or something. And... Uh, I was wondering, like, what, uh, any of the shops have any anything good around here? You know, I'm trying to, uh, work on, uh, honing my edge, and I hear there's some hard game out here, and I was wondering if there's some, uh, hard tools for that hard game. Yeah, I know what you mean. Trying to get that hard game, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Yeah, listen. Does he know what you mean? <laughs> No, I was just smiling and nodding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look. If you want to go big game hunting, you have to know somebody. This is just a trading port. This is for ships to come and go and sell fuel. Now, you got to leave the starport and go down to the hunting lodge, but you won't get in unless you know somebody because they're all a bunch of bigwigs. Now... How, how big are we talking? 
Are we talking like generals or are we talking majors or? Uh, we're talking um, knightly orders, uh, knights of the Imperium. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, so, you know, we're nothing to these people. He assumes that you're lowly. He doesn't even, doesn't even ask. He assumes correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and he says, now you didn't hear it from me, but uh, I wouldn't waste any time worrying about these uh, these shops around here and all their lo the little crap that they peddle. This is just a this is just a through flight place. Mm. But I don't know if you can tell, but I like travelers. So if you're looking for anything special to buy, you know, if you're looking for any special deals, you know, that maybe make you an extra buck or something. Well, Captain's ears perk up. <laughs> don't donate. Uh, you know he might be able to hook you up. Donate? Yeah, it's me. I'm donate. It's my name. Okay. Well, uh, we'll donate. Um, you know we happen to be a little tight and looking to uh, make be a little heavier in the wallet, and uh, you know maybe. Uh, You've heard of some uh, cargo that needs uh, delivering, or some. Uh, I don't know that we're we're not in the market for work that needs to be doing, just cargo that needs hauling, right? You have found yeah. an illicit trader, and um, <laughs> now this is an example where I was saying the captain doesn't always have to do this. This can be somebody else that does this. Uh, this is where you can play the trading mini game. Um, so. Let's see here. I don't know that I'm the best person to be doing this, but... <laughs> Six, five. Five, five. Okay, five, Sorry, five. I've been muted. Muted. Yeah, admin and and streetwise are the skills, the operative skills for. Um, and you you can find, of course bring cargos. somebody in on stuff if you want, but I yeah. have neither. So. Um. He says, uh, "There was uh, there was a ship that came through here a while back, and I happen to know that there was some stuff left out on the docks, and that ship never came back." It's not been back for three months. Now, there is tech in that shipment. And if somebody were to, you know, just um, take one of the loaders at night and maybe talk to the local union and make them turn a blind eye, then uh, somebody might be able to, I don't know, pay some credits for that shipment. Great. What do you, what do you say to that now? I think that sounds like uh, definitely sounds like an opportunity. Um, and I'll uh, how much is it for like a drink? Uh, for food, if I recall correctly, I think it's like thirty credits for food. It's like thirty. Um. It's rough out here. Wow. Yeah. I think it was. I, I think know. that sounds a little. That's, I thought it was ten for drink. Ten. I thought it was twenty. Yeah. No, that's right. Oh. Uh, but we'll go with ten. Actually, ten credits. Okay. I'll I'll uh. Flight him. Thirty then, three times the cost, for a payment for the the drink, and the food. All right. Uh. Mark that off. Let's see. Um, for like for the information. Um, While this conversation is going on, I'm gonna kind of keep my eyes on those off-duty cops, just to make sure they're not overhearing things. 
Yeah, so far they're oblivious, but, uh, you know, okay. if something were to happen and the wrong string were cut, all of a sudden that could change. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, this would be a uh, $40,000 um, modified all-terrain vehicle shipment, and there are three of them. 40000 and there are three tons. Uh, it is a uh, tech that could be used by militants. Could be used by... Um, could be militarized. Um, we don't want that to fall into the wrong hands. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, and basically, he's suggesting if you're willing to pay him, he can make sure that the dock workers turn a blind eye and you can get your ship loaded. I think this is the call for the captain. Yeah. But that's where we'll end the adventure for the night. <laughs>